Welcome to the four-day online festival Georgiens Erste Republik 1918 bis 1921, Geschichte, Literatur, Kunst, that is organized by Writers' House of Georgia in partnership with the Berlin Literaturhaus Lettretage and UNESCO Project Tbilisi World Book Capital 2021. And welcome to the talk, to this talk, Female Writers and Feminism in Georgia, Literature as part of emancipat emancipatory movements from the First Republic to recent times. I'm Barbara Lenerer, speaking from Munich, and with me in Tbilisi is Tamta Milashvili. Welcome, Tamta. I'm very delighted to speak to you. Good evening, and thank you for being the moderator of this event. It's my pleasure. The festival is inspired by Georgia's first democratic republic and marks the centenary of the Soviet occupation in 1921 and the 30th anniversary of the restoration of independence of Georgia in May 1991. Georgia is not only the legendary home of Medea and the Golden Fleece, has its own non-Indo-European language and an old and rich literature dating from the fifth century. It is also Europe's first nationwide experiment in democratic socialism. This brief period of independence from Tsarist Russia sparked off an explosion in literature and the arts. After the Russian Revolution in 1917, its capital Tbilisi with its famous cafe culture became a multi-ethnic meeting point or even haven for writers and artists fleeing the Tsarist empire. Women had the vote at that time and there were five women MPs. When the Bolsheviks invaded Georgia in February 19, 1921, the Red Army not only destroyed the Democratic Republic, but eradicated its modernist avant-garde. Before we now focus on this period and the question of what happened to literary, respectively female voices during the following 70 years of Soviet rule and a new visibility of female writing during the 30 years of restored independence after the collapse of the Soviet Union, I'd like to introduce our speaker Tamta Milashvili. Tamta Milashvili is an acclaimed writer, feminist activist and university teacher at Tbilisi State University, who started to write during her year in Germany. She has written about female migration and German communities in Georgia, has published short stories and three novels. Her works have been translated into many different languages and she won a number of literary awards. Her debut novel, Countdown or Counting Out, published in 2010, was followed by an immense success. It won the prestigious Georgian Saba Prize in 2011 for best debut, depicting two teenage girls in a provincial town in an unnamed war zone. It was written soon after the 2000 um, Russian-Georgian war. The novel was translated into German by Nadja Mikeladze Barsaliani, published under um, the title Abzählen in Unions Verlag, and won um, the Young Adult Award, den Deutschen Jugendliteraturpreis, in 2013. And this is actually the time from exactly the time when I discovered the book and read it. So I'm very well acquainted with it. Tamta's second novel, Eastwards, um, published in 2015, is also set in present-day Georgia and explores women's taboo sexuality, but also some of Georgia's Soviet and post-Soviet untold history. Tamta has also written a third novel with a wonderful title Black, in English, Blackbird, Blackbird, Blackberry, that was published in 2020. It's a novel about a middle-aged single woman who lives in a closed traditional society and environments. We come to these books, we come later to talk, to talk about them. Um, but I have um, 
Another question first, Tam Tam. The issues that run like a common thread through your novels and short stories are um, inequality, underrating the power of women, abuse and social traumas. Does the first Republic of Georgia that lasted only, lasted only three years and was undoubtedly a remarkable period still have a meaning for you as a contemporary writer and feminist? Oh, it's a very good question. Yes, it's, it, it has a big meaning for me, uh, for me as a citizen of Georgia, first of all. Uh, for me as a feminist activist uh, and partly for me as, uh, as a writer. Uh, because it was a short period of time, but it's a very precious uh, um, part of history uh, for me, because the government was led by social democrats. Um, the women were present in political uh, and cultural life. So as you mentioned, we had these uh, five MPs, we had the right to vote, um, etc. Um, but uh, all the, this, overall, the, the context had its preconditions. Uh, and the precondition pre was uh, this uh, very intensive suffragist struggle, which began in the beginning of 20th century um, in Georgia. Um, so, um, and uh, there was very interesting pattern you know, in a way because uh, feminists uh, by then we are also activists and also writers so writing from the beginning for georgian women was very very much political so it was not like you know uh, it was different from france or britain when where women started writing mainly mostly started writing in, eight, in 18th century uh, and it was mainly rom romances or some beautiful love stories uh, so the context was different here and the content was different. So of course there were some love stories in their fiction, but still when you read their texts, you still feel uh, the main line that the main line goes, um, uh, 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 that the main line that uh, uh, lays there. So it's, uh, uh, it touches very important things such as uh, uh, the issues of uh, social issues, uh, the issues of uh, uh, equality, the issues of uh, women's um, rights in many different contexts. So, um, so again, I will repeat that uh, despite of the fact that this uh, our first independence, uh, uh, the independence of the first republic lasted only for three years, it's, it's really precious time. Um, just precious period of, of, of history um, for me. Um, I think that, the, that everybody who appreciates the fact that uh, she or he is too lucky to live in, 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 in an independent state, so uh, loves, is in love uh, with this, uh, uh, with this three years we had uh, um, in the beginning of 20th century, almost 100 years ago. Yes, yes, I see that. And um, but when you, um, when you started as a writer and feminist activist, or even before as a young girl, as a teenager, did you know of this generation of women, uh, creative women and political um, women who had lived, yeah, as you said, almost a century before you, which is a long time? Mm -hmm. Well, I feel a special bond, bonding to these women, but uh, mainly as a feminist activist, not as a uh, writer, unfortunately. Mm -hmm. so, because, um, you know, uh, the fate of these women was quite sad during the Soviet pe period. Uh, so they started their activism, their writing. Um, in the beginning of the 20th century, they were quite prolific during the First Republic. And then the Soviet, um, with the beginning of the Soviet Union, they experienced, you know, some kind of double pressure um, from from very patriarchal institutions uh, on the one side and from uh, from totalitarian regime on the uh, on the other. So um, 
uh, with uh, with the Soviet Union, the Writers Union was established in um, in 1921, and it was a very male dominated uh, institution. And these women, these women writers, were totally marginal, marginal, marginalized. Marginalized. Yes, yes. Mar marginalized from uh, the literary. And Hunter, Hunter, maybe we maybe we come back to that a little later. Be because oh, okay. Before that, this is my very urgent question as well. But before, um, mm -hmm. I would like to um, um, to talk about your second novel, not the first one now, a little okay. bit later, but the second novel, Eastwards, because that is very interesting to me because that is in um, is set in present Georgia, in present day Georgia, as well as the first one. But it goes back to the poets of the First Republic or the tens and the twenties. Mm -hmm. And um, let me just introduce a little bit uh, what it's about, so we have more time for questions mm -hmm. and answers. It's protagonist Irina, who is suffering from some personal trauma or traumas, is researching mm -hmm. a suspected love affair between uh, Tbilisi's famous avant-garde poet Paolo Yashvili and the mystical poet Elena Dariani. Yashvili co-founded the Blue Horns, um, a group of Georgian symbolist poets and prose writers who dominated the Georgian literature in the 1920s. He was suppressed under the Soviet rule early in the 1930s and shot himself when under pressure. Your novel implies that 14 famous pseudonymous erotic poems attributed to Yashvili were actually written by Elena Dariani. And um, as I read, the question of the authorship of the poems is an issue that apparently is still discussed in today's Georgia. I have two questions. The first one is what made you bring exactly this topic into your own fiction 20, mm -hmm. in the 21st century? Um, <clears throat> the authorship of these poems was uh, interesting, also interesting issue for me uh, on the one hand uh, and on the other I wanted somehow to do with the Soviet past in this novel. And as you said, this is the novel, this is a book about a young woman who suffers from many some failed love and fear and also some personal traumas. Uh, and who starts to investigate this uh, secret love story between uh, this famous poet of um, Paolo Yashvili and this enigmatic poet, um, Elena Dariani. Um, so she starts to investigate the story, but what she does is rather um, fabrication of, of a new myth, uh, of a new love triangle. Um, and the reader follows how she does it. So with this, I wanted to show that uh, um, that uh, it's not easy for us, um, neither on individual level nor on societal level to, uh, to analyze or deconstruct the difficult past we had during the Soviet times. But what uh, instead what we are constantly doing is uh, the recreation of, of the myths um, that already uh, exist. So it's, um, it's also connected to trauma as well. Um, um, so, uh, and with this novel, I had different uh, uh, experiences as an author uh, because um, uh, it, it seemed that the uh, readers and the critics had different expectations from me because they, as far as I guess now, they expected something, you know, another love with this passionate love story. But what I did um, actually, and I did it on purpose, is, uh, um, was uh, to deconstruct this love mythology as well, along with this Soviet past mythology. And I also, and me also, as a writer, I had different expectations towards the, reader, towards the readers because I expected this, you know, harsh disputes about, at least about the, about the Stalinist purges. Um, uh, but uh, what I got uh, mainly it was, uh, uh, it was uh, the silence, uh, but still I can explain it uh, uh, in a way that it's not, um, 
it's not easy to deal uh, it's not easy to deal with with the past especially with the difficult past like we had uh, um, especially in 1930s yeah I understand that um, in the do you think the the dispute over authorship has to do with this um, this attitude in a way yes because uh, 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 mainly yes it's a part of this uh, of this overall uh, mythology because um, uh, well um, some people uh, uh, and among them are literary critics um, who are more conservative they prefer to have this uh, than the, the only idea that the author was Paolo Yashvili and they don't accept in no ways another just alternatives that someone could be or could be the author as well but you know for for us for feminists uh, it was um, a big appealing idea it was we 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 have not been like fixed to the idea that the author is Elena Dariani, but we liked to bring into the discussion the fact that uh, okay, let's discuss something something alternative. Uh, why not? Because we're not not living uh, in a society with only with the only truth or with the only um, I don't know with the only history. So let's let's. Uh, Let's discuss or even imagine different uh, different ways and things. But the but you know this those people who um, who feel themselves very attached to the idea that the author was uh, Yashvili, they 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 feel really disturbed by by any different alternatives and. Um, but still, it, this this is the the discussion is still ongoing. But it it didn't bring any other results because it didn't. Uh, uh, go beyond, um, um, it didn't uh, uh, touch um, any other wider topics like uh, like the purges again, or like the, the reconsideration or re-evaluation of, of the past. Yeah. Unfortunately, still it remains in the, in the closed, uh, you know, in the closed discussion of who is the author and why these feminists are bringing the, the ideas of, of the new authorship. Yeah. Um, well, the silence you were met um, with as a reaction to your novel, the silence you were talking about, um, brings us actually back to the 70 years of Soviet Union. And um, as you mentioned before, maybe you want to um, tell a little bit more about the position of women writers during this period of at least of 17 years, which is an extremely long time. Mm -hmm. uh, well, as I mentioned, there were like institutional barriers for these women uh, and also cultural barriers. And there's the great pressure of this totalitarian regime uh, and also hindrances from the writers' um, uh, union. And what they did actually was some of them um, quitted writing at all, or some of them found shelter in, women, in children's literature. Okay. So these women, still they were in their prime of, of their literary career, you know, because they were in their 40s or 50s, but, um, but they had uh, actually no spaces and no options to, to, to write or to express themselves as writers, which is a really sad story. Uh, and um, mm. maybe they maybe they even wrote, but were had, didn't have a chance to publish at uh, any point. Uh, yes, yes, maybe, but there is the issues of censorship, of course, and also self censorship right. because, and also the, the the issue of the archives um, and the, the archives we have, they are very fragmented, so you don't get much sense um, what we are the feelings uh, or um, what we are the context uh, that these women uh, we are living uh, 
uh, in. And the fact that uh, the, that um, this uh, white race union was, uh, was, was the barrier for women, so the evidence for this, I think, is the fact that uh, during, I don't know, more than 70 years, it did not, let's say, so produce women, acclaimed women writer, apart from two exceptions, but these are really two exceptions, one poet and one uh, fiction writer. So during the Soviets, you, you know, when, when someone asks me or, or used to ask me, and I did not know much of the, the, the context, um, who were the famous writers of Georgia during the Soviet times, I, I didn't know whom to name uh, because yeah. they, the, the women were absent. Um, so it's, it's somehow, yeah. Okay. Um, um, Tamta, after Georgia's new independence in 1991, a decade of uh, civil war and, and economic collapse began. And um, it's often said, and I read it everywhere, that if Georgia survived the 90s, it was because of, this, of, of its women. Is mm -hmm. that true? And if yes, in, in what ways? And maybe that leads us to um, your publication on um, Georgian women in Germany, empowerment and migration that you published in 2009, I imagine. Mm -hmm. Yes, it's you know yes, it's true, and it's it's still true because uh, uh, because still Georgian economy relies much on the remittances that your that Georgian migrant women send from 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 the countries uh, they live in, um, and uh, so uh, as for this uh, this one, it was um, uh, this book actually it's a monograph, not a book. Uh, it was my MA thesis, right? Uh, uh, which I wrote when I studied at Central European University, and it was this research was based very much on my own experience because I myself, it was in 2004, it feels like it's a lifetime ago. Um, I myself went to Germany as an au pair for one year, and I lived mm -hmm. there. Uh, so you know, like, many, like many others, hmm? like, like many, many other women. young Georgian women, women. young women. Mm -hmm. So you know, by, it was my first. So Germany was my first foreign country. It was my first travel, my first flight, uh, and you know, in that context, I was living. Actually, it was my the only option I had to, to go abroad and to live for some time abroad. Um, so, and if we get back to the research, uh, so it is, uh, I decided to write it about uh, young women's experience uh, to Germany, a migration experience. Um, and um, um, it was really different from the general pat pattern of feminized migration because generally, and it, it is still like this, that middle-aged women migrate and illegally to, as domestic workers to, from, to Italy or Greece, for example. And it was a legal uh, migration. Uh, so women went there as so peers. Um, and what they did, actually, there was also an interesting pattern, but I didn't fit into that pattern because I knew that I wanted to go back for some personal reasons. Um, so the pattern was that they start, they continued their stay there by applying to the universities and by getting this, um, you know, Western type education that wasn't available by then in Georgia, for example. And they continued their living there as students. They got these residence permits. They worked there. Um, and um, when I was uh, talking with them, they mainly they uh, constructed their lives, uh, their German lives as, as success stories. Uh, and they, they felt uh, that they were empowered through this uh, migration because they somehow managed to organize their lives there independently. And they had this uh, very much emphasized this sense of independence. Uh, uh, they they had there so it was um, it was interesting to follow their to follow their narrative uh, and though many years have passed sometimes and my research uh, focus uh, has changed sometimes I still think that it would be 
uh, it will be interesting to meet my respondents, respondents again and to talk to them now. So to find out how they feel themselves now, how, how they perceive their life in Germany yeah. now. Yeah. Um, Tamta, your, your first novel, Counting Out or Abzählen in German, mm -hmm. um, I, I said that before, I mentioned that before, it was written just after the 2008 war um, between Georgia and Russia. And um, in the center are two teenage girls in some provincial town in, in an unnamed war zone. And as much as I'd like to talk about your personal experience um, of that war that maybe reflects is reflected in the novel. I'm in the context of our talk now, I'm actually more interested in the narrative perspective, which I found very interesting because the whole thing is told, the whole story is told by um, actually one uh, teenager and, um, and two teenage girls, she and her girlfriend, are in the center of this um, novel. And uh, what, why did you choose this, um, this teenager perspective, this young women, or not even women, mm -hmm. perspective so, of young girls? So as you mentioned, I wrote this book almost 10 years ago, so I don't remember much about the uh, about the thinking or uh, writing this book. So I don't think that it was something conscious that I decided that, oh, let's write this book from, from the girl's perspective. I just, um, I just chose it. And uh, yes, it was my protest against this specific war of 2008. Uh, well, I didn't experience it uh, like uh, as a victim of war or something, but um, but still it was a traumatic uh, experience uh, for me, like many other citizens uh, of, uh, of Georgia. Um, and uh, um, yes, I wanted that uh, there is no specific place there because uh, I wanted somehow I wanted to show that um, uh, that these things that happen in this novel can happen anywhere where is uh, where is the war and I also wanted to show that uh, the war is not something that uh, um, that is the fear of uh, the military or the soldiers or male politicians that it affects uh, like ordinary people and among the women and girls so uh, maybe that's why I chose this this specific perspective of uh, of um, of teenage girls uh, to to show um, uh, to show how they they might experience uh, uh, this closed environment of a conflict zone. Yeah. Um. And let's talk a little bit about your latest novel published recently, 2020, Blackbird, Blackbird, Blackberry, which I was able to read as a sample, English sample, uh, translated into English. Um, and uh, can you shortly tell us what is this novel about and what are its main themes? Uh, actually, it was published, it was released in, in February and it's a bestseller. Okay. I didn't expect that. Wow. <laughs> yeah. Congratulations. Oh, thank you. Uh, and it has, you know, it has different layers. Um, so it's about aging, it's about body, it's about sexuality, it's about uh, uh, environmental or ecological issues as well. So actually it's about a woman, a single woman, a middle-aged woman who tries to navigate in a very traditional uh, and close environment. And it's also about her uh, efforts uh, somehow to defend herself as a single woman who lives alone without men and who actually enjoys her uh, solitude. And what she does is uh, somehow to build up, you know, this defensive fence around her to feel safe 
and to lead the life she more or less wants to have. Um, and it's also, uh, it's, it can be read, uh, that the novel can be read as, uh, as the, the story of a repressed sexuality, um, of the woman of, with the repressed sexuality, but you know, I don't think, I don't see it uh, as uh, uh, the whole thing as a black and white. So I think that uh, even, uh, um, even if women in certain circumstances are oppressed in many different ways or repressed in many different ways, I think that they can still find uh, spaces or ways to experience themselves um, uh, their body, their sexuality, um, uh, etc. So it's also, in a way, it's also um, an inner exploration, inner journey of the protagonist. Uh, but I also wanted to um, to tell something about the setting she lives in. But I I didn't describe the setting per se, but I, I think that still I gave this gave the sense of this setting through the reflections or emotions or feelings or reactions this the protagonist has towards the, her uh, towards the micro world she lives um, she lives in. Um, so some some readers told me that the book is very culturally specific. So that the main, mainly the readers from the countries um, who more or less uh, live in the same context like Georgia would understand it. Um, and in a certain way, it's, yes, it is culturally specific, but I don't think that, um, but I, I also think that it touches some, let's say universal issues like, um, like the, the feeling of shame uh, women experience in every part of the world. And uh, this experience uh, can be, well, this the feeling of shame can be manifested in many different ways and can be experienced in different uh, in different ways. But still, I think this, this is the feeling um, that is like, uh, that the women share um, and the source of this shame is the same the patriarchy. So I think that it's um, the novel deals with it's in a way it's a, it's a spe specific, but in a way um, it uh, it can be appealing for, for for the reader from I don't know from abroad. We hope it will be translated very soon so then we can judge as well. Okay. And I'm very curious I'm very curious to read it. Um, Tamte, um, Nayira Gelashvili, Anna Kotsaya Zamadashvili, Nino Haratishvili, Salome Binitze, who, by the way, are all participants in this festival, um, but also writers like Nana Ektvishmili, Tamar Tandashvili, or Yununa Gurili, along with many others, are all acclaimed female writers who have also been translated into different languages in the past few years. And are through their works part of the current emancipatory process of Georgia, I would say, is my impression. Would you mm -hmm. say there is something like a common thread or common theme that runs like a thread through their works? I think that, um, that most of us or all of us write from, uh, from, from women's perspective. Um, and it's something, you know, just we had, okay, we had some women writers before, but um, this is something new that so, we, so many women appeared on literary scene. Uh, and I'm very happy about this uh, because they bring their, their you know, distinctive um, voices in Georgian literature. Um, and in a way, it can be explained by the fact that we, we don't have any of these institutional barriers anymore, um, though there are some cultural uh, barriers still there, but uh, we feel more free to express ourselves, to raise the voices 
uh, to tell our stories. So all these women somehow mm, fill up the, the literary scene uh, with their voices now. And the voices are quite diverse and interesting, I find. Yeah. Um, you write a lot about gender and feminism. Um, could you just quickly describe what um, is the state of women's rights in Georgia today? Uh, sorry, I couldn't follow what... Um, okay, what... I say again. Um, what, is, what would you say is the state of women's rights in Georgia today? Oh, okay. Yeah. Uh, well, it's not easy to, <laughs> to tell in a few words, but women are stronger than you than they used to be. Mm. I don't know, 20 or 30 years ago, especially young women, younger generation, uh, they know what they want. They know how they want to achieve their um, their goals or they know how to follow their own path. Um, and you know this, uh, actually the feminist scene is quite diverse, it's also very diverse in Georgia, so it intersects with many other groups like um, like ecologists, uh, uh, like left-wing um, groups, um, queer groups and yeah. uh, so on. So, so the fight goes on for a better life, let's say so, it goes from many different angles. Um, and yeah, and it's, it's an interesting, very intensive and interesting process. And um, I mean, an important question is, of course, because I mean, you are a writer and you are a teacher and you are an activist. Mm -hmm. um, for you, is it, does it all um, depend on each other? Is it all one thing? Or is it separate things? Do you um, do you do you follow the same um, aims in a way? Overall, yes, yes. Uh, but it's uh, it feels like living comfortably in different rooms. For example, in the room of writing, in the room of activism, and in the room of teaching. So. It depends how and when I feel comfortable in which room. So to 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 express myself or to follow uh, the things I want to follow. So, but overall, of course, it's uh, it's uh, it's the same for me. Yeah, yeah. and um, I mean a question that is not easy to be answered. But um, if you look back um, for the last twenty years, let's say 20 years mm -hmm. in Georgia. Um, do you think that female writing and its current focus on a broad range of topics, gender relation, sexuality, queerness, patriarchal structures, um, all these um, things that once have been taboos, um, do you think that this female writing um, might have a forceful or at least an impact on the emancipatory and social and political process in Georgia? The writing, the yeah. women's writing. Oh, yeah. definitely. Yes, it's a part of this emancipatory yeah. um, yes, process um, by all means. Um, so it's like uh, it's like the the one thing which has different uh, currents from different perspectives, and also uh, of course, uh, feel, well, like women's writing is one of the biggest current in in, in this, let's say, in this wave. <laughs> um, or at least I see it like this, and I think that some that many other women writers would agree with me. Yeah. Uh, uh, no matter if they define themselves as feminists or not, but I think that most of them would say yes. Uh, it's it. This is also like this for. for, yeah. for and it's our issues, our issues um, um, that we want to transport in our writings. Yeah. Sure. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. Um, Tanta, as usual, the time is much too short, and I would have, you know, I would have so many questions which I think I will continue to 
ask when I'm in Tbilisi. But um, I think I have to ask you um, the last question. Um, what are you working on at the moment? Is there a new project, writing project? No, by now no, because I just started my PhD, so I'm I'm mainly focused on my on my new research. But I have ideas mainly of the new novels, um, like at least three ideas, and let's see which one comes out first. Uh, but I have I have this urge of writing uh, more intensive, intensively than I used to have before because I'm. I'm 41, uh, and uh, I think that I have already lived more than I will live. So I want to. <laughs> I want to. Oh, come on, I hope not. <laughs> I want to dedicate not. myself more on right, more on writing. So, so in spite of the fact that I will, I I have some some other things to do. I still want to go on with writing fiction. Well, Tanta, I'm, I'm, I keep my fingers crossed for all the projects that are waiting for you. And I Thank really you. hope that there will be more translations, which was, would be great. And I will try my best to convince people, at least in Germany. And uh, thank you so much for talking to me. It was very interesting to me and a great pleasure. And see you soon in Tbilisi. See you <laughs> soon, hopefully. And thank you for your interesting questions and for your nice talk thank you thank you bye bye bye